think I realized that I have some skill in the area. We meet a student with a catering company just in time for Valentine themed goodies. I get so depressed during winter because oh. like I just I like sunshine. Is our cold weather impacting students beyond just bundling up? We have the details. I think like this the experience of sitting and being able to see it on a huge screen. Are you going back to the movie theater? We spoke to students about their desires for theatrical experiences. Bear News starts now. Hello and welcome to Bear News. I'm Alani. And I'm Mia. On today's show, we start with the rising tuition here at UNC. The COVID-19 global pandemic affected not only businesses and individuals, but it left behind some damages for universities. After concluding last year's spring semester, the University of Northern Colorado sent out an email to students about changes to tuition and student fees. The university has raised tuition and other student fees anywhere from 2 to 7 percent. The UNC Office of Finance and Administration explained some of the increases in order to put the percentages into perspective. A 2 percent increase for full-time undergraduate resident students equates about $16 more per every three credit course. There was also a 3% increase for non-resident student tuition, which equals about $64 more for every three credit class. The university mentioned that the reasoning for the increase is due to the recent inflation as well as university construction. While the university is trying to keep up with the changes that COVID left behind, some students are having second thoughts on the increase. But before it was, it used to be a very affordable school to come to and now, that it's increasing, it's making me want to look into other graduate programs and other graduate schools that are more within budget. But I mean, there is inflation and everything is going up, but it's also hard for like the students who like have been coming here to um, then have to pay more than initial, like the initial years. Right. I think it, I feel like it makes it harder to want to go to college and want to keep pursuing higher education when it does keep getting more extens expensive. Um, I came here because it was more affordable to come to school in state as opposed to other places, but now it's getting more expensive and makes me want to look for other places for further. Valentine's Day is coming soon, and what better way to celebrate than with some homemade sweet treats for yourself or a loved one? Bear News reporter Alani Cassiano took a look at where you can get some one-of-a-kind baked goods. It's almost Valentine's Day, which means it's time once again for business management major Peyton Fritzler to roll up her sleeves and bake some sweet treats. I've been, yeah, basically baking my entire life. Uh, my grandma taught me to bake. When I was, I think, 10, I got my first uh, KitchenAid mixer. It was like a hand-me-down, of course, but um, basically baking since then. Her love of baking inspired her to start selling treats on Valentine's Day to people throughout the UNC community. I've been selling treats for now three years. I think I realized that I have some skill in the area and I figured it was like a good way to like be able to like start my own uh, like business I guess. I've wanted to own a catering company since I was little so I found uh, this was like a way to like get it like rolling and like gain clientele. She offers a wide variety of baked goods for customers to choose from including customizable cookie cakes. This year I'm doing a chocolate covered strawberries, um, M&M cookies, as well as custom cookie cakes, and then um, sugar cookies, iced of course. So the custom cookie cakes this year, I have a 6 inch cookie as well as an 11 inch cookie. Basically you can have whatever you want written on it. Uh, the practice one as well as the one I'm doing today, or say be mine on them, but uh, they can say anything you want. If the public shows interest, she looks forward to expanding her business to sell baked goods year-round. She hopes her baking helps spread feelings of love and care during Valentine's Day. I hope they feel like, I guess, special in a way, like someone like cares about them, whether that be themselves buying it and making the day special even if you don't have a Valentine, or um, if you do have a Valentine, something that it's like more like personable. Getting a treat like homemade for you is always something special. The deadline to order Peyton's Valentine's treats is coming up fast, so be sure to place your orders soon. 
I'm available both on or on two Instagrams, my Made by Peyton account or Peyton Avery spelled the same way. And the link to order is in both of my bios, so it's a Google form and it lists out all of the prices. Um, I'm taking orders at minimum till February 7th. I might take them a little longer depending on how that goes. Um, and they'll be available on the 14th for pickup or delivery. This has been Alani Cassiano with Bear News. Thanks, Alani. Those look delicious. I love the detail on the frosting. Oh, I'm sure they are. UNC is home to all sorts of clubs and organizations, but one group in particular is using a beloved game to build community. Reporter Will Coleman spoke to an affinity group within the GSRC about their club. Just off the corner of 10th Avenue and 22nd Street sits the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, where queer D&D meets every other week to explore fantasy worlds and create new stories. Uh, it's D&D, but just uh, people from the GSRC, queer people, come together and start playing together. It's basically done by queer people for que queer people, but anyone can join. While Dungeons & Dragons provides an entertaining medium, the group come together for more than just the game. Queer D&D provides a safe space to build community and allows players the opportunity to create the stories they want to see. Some of it deals with escapism, going into an identity that you can explore through the game. Kind of like, you know, finding your favorite movie and going into that to relate to a character, but instead you create that character. Because a lot of media fails the LGBTQ community, we can create that media for ourselves. You might not be comfortable in your environment, and your identity in the real world, but you can escape to a fantasy land where you fight dragons and you can have whatever identity and community and space that you can come up with. Thanks to the creative freedom it allows for, Dungeons & Dragons is more popular now than ever, though the game is not without controversy. Last month, leaked changes to D&D's open game license caused a significant boycott on the game's companion app, D&D Beyond. Additionally, Dungeons & Dragons has come under fire several times for its portrayal of in-game species aligning with real-world racial stereotypes. And topics, especially around the idea of such relatability to experiences we've had in our um, past in America and also in our current present of America, really should be up to the player and the party, not a main stage selling point of the game. Ultimately though, the narrative freedom that Dungeons & Dragons allows for is enough to keep the game fun and useful for groups like Queer D&D. &D. I think the beauty of D&D &D is creating it as you want to see it, and so you don't have to include that, so you can create the safe space that you really want to see. Apart from identity or escapism or community. It's just fun to fight a dragon. <laughs> For Bear News, I'm Will Coleman. Thanks, Will. Queer D&D meets every other Friday from 4 to 9 p.m. at the GSRC Annex. Casa Bonita's reopening date has been announced by South Park creators and is now hiring. One of Colorado's most iconic restaurants, known for food and fun in a festive atmosphere, will be reopening this May. The menu is yet to be revealed, but longtime fans can expect to see some of Casa Bonita's prior dishes. Over the last several months, renovations have been underway to the building, including a brighter pink color. The restaurant shut down due to COVID pandemic restrictions back in spring of 2020, but in September 2021, Trey Parker and Matt Stone entered into a purchase agreement to buy Casa Bonita. Casa Bonita is now hiring for 550 plus jobs. The restaurant announced it is now accepting applications for positions such as entertainment staff, waiters, and cooks. Those who are interested in being a part of Casa Bonita's future can find the online job listings at casabonitajobs.com. Depending on the role, some employees may start immediately, while other start dates may be delayed. It would be impossible not to notice these freezing temperatures lately, and it doesn't look like we will be getting a break anytime soon. Let's head over to Bear News reporter Emma Golub for more on how bears here on campus are tackling the frigid weather. Punxsutawney Phil, ladies and gentlemen! Well, it's official. Punxsutawney Phil has told us we have six more weeks of winter. But with this never-ending frigid weather, it's hard to see those spring flowers anytime soon. But how do UNC students feel about this weather? 
does it have more of an effect on us than just taking a few extra minutes in the morning to bundle up? Um, well, I don't have a parking pass, so I walk to class every day, so I have sweats in my bag, I have gloves in my pocket, and I just have to layer up every day, but it's kind of nice because I get a ride in the mornings from someone. Buildups of ice and snow can also make dangerous conditions for driving and walking to class. I have fallen a few times, so that was fun. <laughs> During times of extreme cold like this, people can actually enter a sort of hibernation mode, which causes them to isolate and detach from normal activities. But isolating like that can actually increase feelings of depression and anxiety. I get so depressed during winter because oh. like, I just, I like sunshine and warmth and I feel like the cold is just not good. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, seasonal depression is caused by a decrease of vitamin D that we are exposed to which the body produces when exposed to sunlight. Vitamin D is responsible for producing serotonin, and with lower levels comes mild to severe depression, insomnia or hypersomnia, and low energy. This made me late, definitely, because um, I have not wanted to get out of bed. Even with the downsides to this weather, some students are trying to see the positives. I love the winter. I do. I, I do. I love I the snow. It. I, I think winter is the cutest outfits. Like it has the cutest outfits. That's on. true. During this season, it's important to have a strong support system and visit UNC's free counseling services if you need. And you can always warm up with a cup of coffee during those extra cold mornings. Emma Golub, Bear News. Thanks, Emma. Be sure to stay warm and take care of yourselves out there, bears. Have you managed to stay warm out there, Mia? Just barely, I can't stand this cold. <laughs> Since the end of the COVID pandemic, movie theaters have tried their hardest to claw their way back from the brink of death, and it seems like they have finally pulled through. Bears reporter Yvonne De La Garza has more. The pandemic took a lot out of us. It took friends, it took family, even our experiences at the movie theater. Join me as I ask you and Susan's other about their experiences after the pandemic. I don't go to the movie theaters too often in general, but when I do post-COVID, don't mind. It's always been like a tradition for my mom and I to go see like superhero movies together and stuff like that. And so we weren't able to do that for like the two years or so that everything was shut down. So I just get really excited. Lots of good movies are coming out this year. And movie goers are excited to watch them. I'm really excited for the Ant-Man, uh, Quantumania. That, that one movie it looks really Thank good. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing The Chosen in theater. If I decide to do that with some friends, it might end up happening. With so many options for entertainment, the choice between movie theaters and streaming services has become tougher. I asked students what they would choose, a night out or staying in their couch. It, it really depends on my mood. Like, if I'm in the mood to just stay home and do nothing and let my brain turn off, then I'll just do streaming. But if, um, if I want to like actually go with friends and like have a good time and uh, enjoy my movie going experience, I'll go to the movies. Movie theaters by far, because I think like this the experience of sitting and being able to see it on a huge screen with it being like really loud and with a whole bunch of other people, I think is a much more like intimate, rememberable experience. I think more recently streaming, just because it is, it's like a more comfortable space. You can just pick any movie you want, it's cheap. You can get any snack you want. But movie theaters are taking every precaution to ensure a safe and enjoyable time for everybody. So grab your popcorn and get ready to enjoy the show. Yvonne, all semester long, we will be bringing you entertainment news updates, so be sure to stay tuned. You may want to rethink relying on ChatGPT to write your five-page paper due at 1159 tonight. The popular website Turnitin.com, which is used by many teachers and professors, has stated that it has technology that can detect AI-generated writing tools such as ChatGPT. The Turnitin system offers a thorough analysis to ensure that a body of writing contains originality. Vice President of AI at Turnitin said machines operate in a different way than humans. ChatGPT uses information from the internet to write by selecting the most likely next word in the sentence. It gives the possibility of sequences not making as much grammatical sense as if a human had written them. Turnitin is upgrading its products due to ChatGPT. The chief executive of Turnitin said they have been working on software developments for two and a half years. 
New Scientist reports OpenAI is in talks to put digital watermarks on AI-generated text to help educators spot work that has used text generators such as ChatGPT. Early this week, the Denver Broncos announced who their next head coach would be. This past head coach search was a roller coaster of emotions, and now that the ride is over, Bear News Sports reporter Caleb Swish is here to fill us in on the Broncos' new head coach. Let's go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. On January 31st, the Denver Broncos announced that they would be trading a 2023 first-round pick and a 2024 second-round pick to the New Orleans Saints for head coach Sean Payton and a 2024 third-round pick. The announcement comes after weeks of rumors, interviews, and the internet picking apart every little thing candidates would say or do that would possibly allude to who would be Denver's next head coach. The search for the Broncos' next head coach began when the team fired former head coach Nathaniel Hackett towards the end of this season. Since firing Hackett and before landing Payton, the Broncos had been linked to several big names in the head coaching market, as well as several of the offensive and defensive coordinators who had had an impact on their teams this past season and were looking for the opportunity to coach their own teams. Candidates included Jim Harbaugh, head coach for the University of Michigan, Ajiro Evero, the current defensive coordinator for the Broncos, Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator for the Rams, David Shaw, the head coach of Stanford, Jim Caldwell, a former head coach for both the Lions and the Colts, and of course, Peyton himself. Peyton was the head coach for the New Orleans Saints from 2006 to 2021, where he led the Saints to nine playoff appearances with seven division titles and a Super Bowl championship in 2009. A Saints fan here on campus says he thinks there were no better option for the Broncos out of the available candidates. I think Sean Payton just has a long, illustrious career that can kind of back up his, his resume and stuff. Ryan also thinks that Peyton brings something to the team that none of the Broncos' recent head coaches brought with them. Sean Payton has money. He doesn't need money. And so at this point, he would do it purely for the kind of pride of turning a team around. And so I think just that level of investment. It does bring some controversy with him to the Broncos, though. In 2012, Peyton was suspended after evidence came up that a bounty system was in place from 2009 to 2011 within the Saints organization. Peyton was suspended for a year without pay, but returned to coach the Saints after his suspension was up. For Bear News Sports, I'm Caleb Swish. Thanks, Caleb. For more on the world of the NFL and your local UNC sports, stay tuned to Bear News. Looks like this next season might be interesting. Do you follow the NFL, Alani? I don't, but I'm really looking forward to the halftime show at the Super Bowl. I heard Rihanna's performing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to watch. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today here at Bear News. We'll see you next time.